Okay, welcome back. Uh, this is the next lecture in Unit 5. The, um, we're actually doing two different uh, design topics uh, for Unit 5 uh, because I wanted to cover both balance and the basics of color. We will return to color again for a second lecture in a couple of units later. And um, for this lecture, we're going to keep mostly, like I said, to the basics. Uh, so hopefully some of this will be things that you had learned in middle school or grade school. And um, what we're going to talk about are primarily the color wheel or organization, you know, what are primary colors, secondary colors, some of the, sort of, some of the subtlety of those topics a little bit. Um, but most of that will be left for the second lecture. We'll talk about the three main characteristics of color. Uh, hue, value, and intensity, and then we're going to be talking about color organizations, and those are kind of also related to the topics of the, the color wheel. So let's start with the color wheel. Um, you may be familiar with it. Um, so the basic premise of the color wheel, uh, and this one is actually kind of designed off of the Munsell color wheel uh, most closely, but the basic premise of the color wheel is that there are, in painting, there are three primary colors, and that then there are secondary colors, and the secondary colors are the colors that are made by mixing two of the primary colors. So for our purposes, right, most of us learned as a kid that there was the three primary colors were yellow, red, and blue, and they're defined as being primary, meaning that you can't mix colors to make it. You have to have those three colors in order to make any of the other colors, and so, um, Anyway, um, but um, now if you are if you've been paying some attention, uh, you may know that um, in terms of printing, the three primary colors, like for printing a, a color image, are actually yellow, cyan, and magenta. So magenta would be more over here, and the cyan would be over here, and you can make the case that those really in the in terms of using paint and using pigment um, and reflective color, what we normally call subtractive color, um, in that world that those should be the true primaries. You could also make the case that the traditional primary of uh, yellow, red, and blue work actually slightly better. Um, and then on top of that, if you know something about color, like let's say you're a theater student and you've done some work with lighting, you might know that when it comes to projected light, what we call additive color, right? Um, that when, or if you know anything about computer screens, you might know that the primary colors are green, right? And red and a blue violet, um, sometimes called like an indigo, right? Um, so a, a green, red, blue, as opposed to a yellow, uh, red, blue. And so what that, um, but all that really means is that, you know, like in different contexts, different things function as, as, uh, as primary colors. But for our purposes right now, we're going to mostly stick to the idea of the traditional set of primaries of yellow, red, and blue. And then, so secondary colors, traditionally, if the primary colors are yellow, red, and blue, then the traditional secondary colors would be orange, right? The mixture of yellow and red and violet mixture of blue and red. I don't use the word purple generally, and I have specific reasons for that. We'll get to that at my second lecture on color. And then green of some sort. Which green is kind of uh, confusing, right? Um, which somewhere in here would be the right green that would be exactly halfway from there to there. Um, okay, so here's some works of art that are using uh, primary uh, color triads. Um, in the case of the uh, Ellsworth Kelly, this is very close to the primary colors of projected light of the additive system. And um, in the Mondrian, it's pretty much spot on for the primary colors of the traditional uh, additive system. So the next thing we're going to be talking about, now that we understand primary colors, secondary colors, and roughly how um, the color wheel works, is to talk about the fact that there's actually three characteristics to every color. We primarily focus, when we're talking about color, on the differences of hue, like the thing that makes yellow different from magenta or violet or a green, 
right? Those are the things that, that we think are the interesting differences between color, but that's only one characteristics of color. Every color that you can think of can be defined in terms of its hue, but also its value and its intensity, right? In that, um, let's say for a red, like this kind of red, orange, red, we can imagine a version of it that is lighter, right? Like you could take this color and lighten it by adding more white. But of course, if you lighten it, it would lose intensity. We can imagine a version of it that gets darker, right? And it could get a little bit darker without losing intensity, although it might have to shift and get a little bit more of like a red violet red to get darker. But at some point, if it got really dark, it would have to also lose its intensity. And, but we could also change its intensity without changing its value. So all three of those characteristics are significant um, and need to be seen in relation to each other. Now, if you're really paying attention, you might notice that there is something off about this chart. I actually found this chart, but pay attention that the shifting of hue, it should actually also relate to a very slow transitioning of value, right? In that the values should be darkest here by the blue, violet, violet, and the blue, right? And then so it should slowly shift lighter towards the yellow green in this direction and slowly shift um, lighter as we go to the yellow, yellow oranges, right? But there's something a little bit off here, um, which is we have, I mean, there are a number of things that are a little bit off, but especially right here, we have um, this jump where this color is lighter than the next green down. So yeah, but you know, things aren't perfect, but the intensity chart is pretty nice. Okay. So let's talk about color organization. We have about almost three minutes. We might be able to wrap this up. So there are analogous color organizations. Analogous color organizations can be defined as, when we're looking at the color wheel, any kind of organization of painting where you're really sticking to a group of colors all in one section of the color wheel. So mostly greens and kind of blue greens here, mostly a red, orange, yellow that also is a classic analogous color organization. Complementary color organizations are color organizations where the one of the primary color ideas is the pairing of two colors that are close to opposite sides of each other on the color wheel. Let's go back to the color wheel for a second. So here on the color wheel, you know, we think of like the yellows as being close to the complements on the opposite side of the violets or reds across from greens. So in the case of the Arnolfini wedding, although there's lots of neutral colors in here and there are spots of some other colors, it's the primary force of the painting is the pairing of this green with the red behind it, right? And that, so that complementary pairing is the most important color idea in the painting. And similarly, there are other colors in here, but the, the blue and blue violet pairing with the oranges and kind of uh, um, orange reds is also the, the primary idea there. And monochromatic color organizations can be described as in a painting where all the colors pretty much don't change in hue, right? Like you basically pick a hue and then stick with it. Now there are slight changes of hue going on here, but it's, it's mostly changes of value I have a minute left. Let's see if we can finish it. Changes of value and um, changes of intensity that are going on in both these paintings. And then probably the most extreme examples of, um, of a uh, uh, monochromatic color organization would be these, these sort of like low intensity or neutral color organizations where there's almost no color whatsoever. Now, I think the Madame X painting is a, a really interesting example color wise because it so looks like um, there's way more color in it than there is, but really we're looking at just neutrals and browns, right? Like just black, white, gray, and various types of brown, a little bit of some red browns, and that's about it. Um, and we have, oh shoot, we have a little bit more to cover. I'm gonna end here and we'll do 